had no money, none. Went to my dad, he said, well, if you can pay me back in a year's time, I'll give you a loan. The $10,000 loan covered only half the cost of her first printing press. I heard about a company that did paper shopping bags out in California, and he also built presses. That's where the first press came from. A friend agreed to house the press in her barn. And thus, Bag Makers was hatched in the cornfields of Illinois. I didn't think about nerves, just the determination. How can I do it? That does not interfere with my life at all. I'll find a way to do it. It did interfere at home, though. By day, there were face-to-face -face sales calls. At night, there was printing to be done, not to mention artwork and deliveries. It was cost-effective, but life-altering. The kids, they pretty much raised themselves because I wasn't around. The first year, Maribeth and her friend handled about 20 to 25 orders a week. It was more than enough to pay her dad back. She also went to trade shows looking for new customers. Promotional products, t-shirts, caps, pens, and bags have to be printed somewhere. But how do you stand out from the crowd when you sell bags and you're barely in business? When I went to the very first show, just did a, a fold out and th there was no pricing in it whatsoever. Pat Drinkwine, selling trophies in the next booth, showed Maribeth the ropes and helped her develop a catalog. Maribeth featured what else? Her family. Naming different types of bags after her kids, the grandchildren, even their dog. People really bought into that and gave them something to talk about. You have to make sure if it's a family member, it's a bag that's going to be successful. Mm -hmm. You don't want to have to take that family member out of the catalog. Yeah. <laughs> Maribeth didn't just brand the company, she also found a way to make people remember her. Remember that passion for fashion? I would always wear a hat, and that became my branding. I became the bag lady. <laughs> Five years in, Bag Makers was doing about $700,000 in sales. By the late 1980s, though, Maribeth's private life was taking off even faster than her business. We have a cute thing. I do every job my wife didn't want to do. A year after they met, Maribeth married Chuck Sanford in 1991. He didn't go to work at Bag Makers immediately. When the time came, she popped the second question. I'd had about a year and a half to think about it, and if she ever asked me, I was going to say yes. He never went to college, but Chuck figured out that Bag Makers didn't need to run lean and mean the way everyone else did after a recession in the early 1990s. I did the opposite. The company was a cash cow. We're making money, and that would allow me to keep large inventories. If a customer calls and wants us to print on a product in a very short period of time, we can do it. In 2010, sales topped $40 million for the second time in three years. That placed bag makers 34th out of more than 3,500 suppliers in the $16.5 billion promotional products industry. Keeping bag makers on track allows Chuck to be at the track. He owns racehorses. For Maribeth, the track is just another place to wear a hat. You cannot go to the Derby with last year's hat. It's a big part of the entire Kentucky Derby crowd. Maribeth's children are beginning to take over, but she considers all of her 300 employees her extended family. The last thing, honestly, that I wanted was to be involved with the family business. I realized that I'm really proud of what she had accomplished and, and wanting to continue that for the over 300 families here as well as you know for our family as well. You see those people grow and how your children grow. That's what's so heartwarming to me.